from, ho from home, fighting out of Chorley. The popular favourite here tonight is going to be Minter, but he's got experience to cope with that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to ITV for the big fight live. Frank Warren in association with www.frankwarren.tv and sponsored by The Sun, proudly present this evening's chief supporting contest. 12 three minute rounds for the WBU World Welterweight Championship, live and exclusive from Excel London and on ITV. Your officials are appointed by the World Boxing Union and the British Boxing Board of Control. And your three scoring judges at ringside are Mr. Dave Paris from London, Mr. Carl Rogers of Spain, and Mr. Reg Thompson from Crawley. Your WBU supervisors are Mr. Bobby Rogers of Hornchurch and Tom Fosterbold of Coventry. And your steward in charge this evening is Mr. Bill Lundgren. And when the action begins, your referee in charge of the action is Mr. Mickey Van of Leeds. Your timekeeper of the bell is Mr. Bob Edgeworth. And now to introduce the contestants. Firstly, from Crawley and Sussex, weighing in at 10 stone 6 and 3 quarters, and fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red shorts, he enters the ring with 17 wins and 2 losses. He represented Great Britain in the inaugural Sugar Ray Leonard Cup against the USA. And tonight is hoping to join his father in becoming a world champion. Please welcome the challenger for the title, Ross the Boss Minter. And across the ring stands the champion, fighting out of the blue corner and wearing the black and red trunks. Weighing in at 10 stone 6 and 3 quarters, he brings with him a record of 31 wins and just 2 losses as a professional. He is the former British welterweight champion and tonight makes the first defence of his world title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Chorley in Lancashire, the reigning WBU welterweight champion of the world, Michael Jennings. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee will now give his final instructions to both boxers. Well, you both had your instructions in the dressing room. By my commands at all times, I want no notice with the head. Shake hands. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, 12 three minute rounds for the WBU World Welterweight Championship. Well, here we go. It's Chorley versus Crawley, the Lurcher versus the Boss, Jennings against Minter. It could be special. Jennings, as you'll see, has a height and reach advantage, and Minter will try and get right on him as he is doing from word go here and try and throw bombs. He believes that's the way to beat Jennings, that's the way Young Muttley did it, he got in range and when he got the opportunity he really made his punches count. Jennings, if he can do so, will fight at distance, pick his man off with rangy shots, with jabs like those and Minter, a pressure fighter, who's got a tremendous heart, is tagged in the early stages. Minter tried to suggest there's no damage done, but he felt that one, Duke. He should have took an eight count, Johnny went straight down. He got caught flush with a right hand from Jennings. It was as, as quick and as, as flush as you like. Should have took an eight count there. If Jennings jumps on him, he's still not recovered yet. If Jennings can jump on him again, this fight could be over very, very quickly. Worst possible start this for Ross Minter. Jennings now knows that he can hurt him, he's stung him in the very first minute and of course that does beg the question how much that defeat against Freddie Curiel has affected Ross Minter. Sometimes it can only take one defeat to reduce a fighter's punch resistance and it's early stages to say that and Minter can come back from it, of course he can, but if he does succumb the question will be there what damage was done and that Jennings is having a big, big opening round. How has Minter recovered? No, I don't think he has quite recovered, John. He needs to think about clearing his head. 
you know, maybe just back off just a slightly and just try to get through this first round. Shouldn't he be thinking about winning the round? It should be a matter of survival. Jennings, who's a drummer in a punk rock band up on the Northwest Circuit called The Shocks. It would certainly be a shock if you took Minter out in the opening round. Nobody, but nobody anticipated that one. And the, the thing is, is that, you know, Jennings won't slow down. If anything, he gets quicker. He's a fit kid. He's like a workaholic when he's in there. He's like a surgeon. The really punch... good jab that was. Worked his way through the lead, but Minter appears to have recovered now. He's recovered his composure and he's trying to get back into his rhythm. Yeah, as try as he may, I just think it's the wrong tactics at this present moment in time. Should be thinking about just clearing his head every time the right hand lands from, from, from the opponent there, he just gets through. The one thing about Minter is that he does not have great lateral movement. When I commentated on that ESPN and uh, ITV contender series, Teddy Atlas picked up the fact from a really early stage that Minter's lack of lateral movement was leaving him open to possible big shots from Curiel and that's the way it happened. Oh, good shot! Good work from Minter in the closing seconds of the round, enjoying his best little period. The new Renault Twingo. Serious fun. From £7,500. So a good start from Jennings. Minter finished the round strongly. And his corner telling Minter that he's got to work in behind the jab. He can't just keep walking forward and absorbing those right-hand pot shots from Jennings, which so nearly put him on the seat of his pants in the opening seconds. But the thing is, also with Minter, There'll be mental scars from his last defeat uh, when he boxed in the contender series. You know, he hasn't, he hasn't been able to fight since then for obvious reasons. But now, you know, if you would have thought there was going to be a knockout, you would have thought it would have been, it would have come from Minter. But he's been stung now by Jennings. But he did finish that first round well. There were two or three shots which got their way through. One thing you can say about Jennings, though, is that he is always immensely fit. He looked a little bit drawn, I thought, at the weigh-in yesterday, but he's a natural athlete. He's got speed, he's got athleticism, and just watch the way he moves. He moves with the, the grace and the agility of, if you like, a natural athlete. Uh, Jennings is, is, an, is an outstanding boxer. If you want to teach somebody how to box, you could put on a tape with this kid, because I tell you what, he's the consummate pro when it comes to boxing skills and lateral movement. Whoa, and Mitch Roberts teed off with a right hand, did get through with a left, and suddenly encouragement for the very sizable band of Minter fans who are here in the audience tonight and already in the second round this fight is really warming up I remember it's been a part of three years ago when uh, Michael Jennings went in the ring against Bradley Wal Bradley Price he said Bradley Walsh against Bradley Price what a fight that was Minter's got to cut the ring off quicker he cannot allow uh, this young man to just dominate the fight from range and just move from left to right. He's given him plenty of movement and Minter just isn't cutting the ring off quick enough. He's allowing Jennings to hit and not get hit. Jennings trained as ever by Brian Hughes as he has been through his career. A wise old fight figure from the Collie House and Moston Gym. And just look at this, they're going toe to toe in the second round and Minter by sheer willpower, by heart, is forcing his way back into this fight and he is wanting to say to Jennings, you are not going to get this all your own way and I will turn this into my fight. Well, Jennings did a very clever move there, he actually stepped to the right and speared Mensa with the jab, then he moved back to his left and hit him with another jab and that's what brought that, that onslaught from Minter. 
Minto damaged his hand in the fight against Curiel last year and as well fractured a rib that went again in training four months after that it's contributed to his long gap of ring from ring action so it would be no surprise if there was a little bit of rust in there he says that the sparring has gone well and his trainer Johnny Eames and he's just starting to enjoy a little bit more success in this second round Jennings wanting to hold on